everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I have a three-part experiment. Uh, in this one, my friend Matthew Clemens, one of the administrators over on Ron Rance and Disciples, the Facebook page where we're dedicated to the fast and loose large hake brush painting, has sent me a picture of the Sahara dust. I think this is either from his backyard or when he was out kayaking. Let me see if that shows up. Well, yeah, it should show up good enough. Anyway, so I've been looking at it and I thought, why not do this as an experiment with three different toned papers? So here I have Bockingford tinted watercolor, Bockingford tinted watercolor paper and Stonehenge aqua paper. This is 100% alpha cellulose, alpha cellulose cotton. Um, I will point out, since I, I fold and I tear my paper, I do have a little bit of difficulty tearing this paper, but if these wind up being matted or anything like that, that would be hidden. So this is either the oatmeal or the cream. Um, this is just the blue and then just Stonehenge aqua white. So, I figured I'd go through these and paint these scenes using the different um, paint, paper, and seeing the different results. Now, what we have to keep in mind is that I'll be painting the scene over three times. So, there's going to be variations in energy level, there's going to be variations in um, application, um, things that I see beforehand, things that I don't catch at first. So you're going to keep that in mind whenever we see like the final results of all three. And I'm going to break it down into three videos. By the way, I'm live streaming this. So um, being that I'm live streaming it, there might be some like side conversation with um, people that are coming into the live chat. So we're going to start with this quarter sheet of Stonehenge. By the way, oh yeah, so I'm live streaming it and I'm going to stop the video once I'm done with the, the one paper painting. And then um, from there I will uh, then start another video. So I'll have three separate live streams and three separate uploaded videos. There might have to be a fourth one with a comparison of the three results. Hopefully the results come out good. Um, I started as I was coming up with the idea for this one and I had a good night's sleep last night. I slept like 12 hours. Starting to feel a lot better compared to how I was a few days ago. So whatever it was, definitely on the tail end or hopefully just over it. Anyway, so it just feels good to have the energy to say that I could probably do three paintings back to back. Um, also, just in the interest of, I guess, of like science, if you were to do something like this, you could lay out all the papers one at a time and then paint over them um, and do that approach. You could also look at it in, from different viewpoints. Palette wise, there are some colors that I kind of want to experiment with. I am thinking about putting out a Prussian blue. I'm going to see if I have that readily available. I also have, I'm going to leave out the Titan buff. Reason being is the reflection on the water is so pronounced in this photograph that I don't think simply having the white of the paper would do it justice, or at least I don't have the um, skill. I don't think that you know to keep to do that highlight justice. So either I'm going to use Titan Buff or um, you know something else. I was even thinking gouache, but I'll probably stay away from that just for posterity's. But we'll see. I also have Naples Yellow Red out. 
That might be fun too. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get started. In fact, the reason I'm thinking a little bit of Prussian blue is just that horizon. Oh, I think I was also mentioning that I've been looking around online prior to this. And obviously, this scene is very reminiscent of JMW Turner paintings, as well as, um, who's the other one? Uh, Monet's Sunset Paintings. The Impressionist, very um, you know, reminiscent of that. This is Prussian blue. This is a different start for me. I think I'll probably do my wet and wet and then do that wash over it that I've been doing with the raw sienna to get that effect. And then technique wise, I'm just going to be trying to hide my brush strokes. Maybe not so much in the... Uh, the water, but definitely in the sky. I had also debated taking masking tape, cutting it into the circle and utilizing that as a way to preserve the white from the sun. We're going to lift it right there. Bring it straight down. I'm just lifting that water now. All right, so plush, Prussian blue. Let me uh, a little ultramarine higher up in the sky. This could be the, the background, the horizon line right in here, kind of right in the middle, unfortunately. But we'll play around with it. This is that Prussian blue. And as it comes forward, it takes on that raw sienna cast to it. So the little lifts, I don't know if it's showing up well, is showing up a little bit. Um, and that was just pulling the water out right in the very beginning. I'm thinking that the next one I'll be more pronounced with that. So like that disclaimer in the beginning, as I'm doing this, I'm going to see changes that take place. Also, since I'm introducing Prussian blue, I'm going to have to be careful with the raw sienna over that. Raw sienna and Prussian blue, I believe, do take on a greenish tint, while the ultramarine and raw sienna is more often a um, just a muted like uh, earth tone. Let me actually mix that muted earth tone to show you what I mean. Kind of like a gray. Go. Let's get a little brush texture. Okay, so remember this is the Stonehenge Aqua paper. There is land masses. Um, I'm gonna look at the reflections for those. Burnt umber. With ultramarine. Put that in as 
the reflections coming down. I often, like I said, I put the reflections in first because of that wet and wet. I like to take advantage of that opportunity. I don't want this line mass to stop dead center even though it is in the picture. So artistic license, I could either have it carry over or I can have it fall short. So that's another thing that might vary between the paintings. Let's, let's carry it over. Lift. Like I said, the, the lifting isn't going to really do it much justice if I paint it super light. Here's that landmass. And I'm going to go wet and wet with it. There's also this background landmass, which I want to go on more blue side. Help it recede. This guy, in fact, has that light phenomena of light underneath it. Um, on a few Facebook pages, I shared a painting from a few paintings from the Hudson River Valley movement. Um, I can't pronounce, I'm not good at the name pronunciation, but I think it's Bristad. 1800s painter landscape. Um, I think it was a Hudson River Valley, also luminous painter. Then he had far distant objects. He had a very dramatic sky with a beam of light coming down. And between the mountain and the water, there was a white, brilliant white highlight. And I posted online asking, is there a name for this? And you know, a lot of people were saying, it's um, artistic license. It's uh, a separation between the mountains and the um, the water. And then some people had posted and saying, actually, there's a there's a name for it, uh, a key line. Or um, then an expert on the Hudson River Valley movement had chimed in and said that it was a motif often used by him, Versad to um, dramatize the lighting where even though it was a thin line in the picture remember that water is a flat plane receding back and it was probably a big plane of light on the water coming from the dramatic cloud in the sky so it was really interesting like the the viewpoints that started coming out and you know from different researchers, different fields, like an illustrator, I'd said an illustration, we call it this, that, and the other thing. So um, to have all that information start coming out and taking place was awesome. I was talking to my buddy um, that does the oil painting glazes in detail. And I've been um, talking to him and kind of experimenting with that for myself. And Anyway, where was I? Um, let's talk about that. I'm just letting little dry brushes for this reflection come down. Then I'm a dry brush, I think a little bit of water texture, but I want to get this darker. Yeah, we were just talking about like, you know, different motifs, different art styles. Um, they were talking about how a lot of knowledge is 
just lost. Like, you know, some people say, you know, like the uh, techniques of the luminists, you know, is that information lost or not? Or the techniques of glazing and whatnot, is that still out there? Use a little bit of Payne's Gray. So I want to darken this guy up. Let me get the number four rigger, if I can find it. There's a number one. Number one. There we go. A little bit of a shoreline. A little too much water. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do a wash off. I'm gonna grab some of the ultramarine blue. Kind of mellow it out with the yellow ochre, yellow raw sienna. I'm gonna tilt this on an angle so that it's less dry brush distance between it at that far distance because there's more of an overlap. And then as it comes closer, let those ripples occur more. Then we're kind of drying out down here, but I'm gonna do that wash over everything of that raw sienna. Mix a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'll use light red oxide for this one. To get a kind of purple. variation I'm going to do a dry off in a second and we'll do that wash well, we're probably going to paint a little bit more on this um, structure Then we'll do a wash.
So I'm going to use the number four rigger to add a little bit more life in here. I'm going to use, I'm going to get a green. I'm going to mix green. Lemon yellow with Payne's gray. I'm just going to kind of dot it in. You can use the hake to put this texture in as well. I'm just trying to add a little bit of life to this spot. Raw sienna. Um, let's do ultramarine and lemon yellow just to get some different greens happening. Could use the side as a textured effect. Throw some burnt sienna in there. Darker reflection. Could flick the number one rigger if I could find that for just a little bit of trunks and action, just making up texture in here. Like staring very closely at this picture, there are like little bushes and whatnot, but I'm not going to try to get it perfect or anything like that. This is just arbitrary artistic license just to give effects. And then when we dry off, if we're happy with this, we'll then look at the washes. Kind of emphasizing a little S shape composition right here. Feed some darks into this wet and wet. Now, let's try it off, see how we like it.
So, the thing to keep in mind is that Sahara dust that's coming in is putting a haze over everything. And in this case, I'm going to use that raw sienna that I've been playing with for that kind of wash. Let me make sure everything is nice and dry for this. apply this wash all over the whole painting. I can use the hake brush if I want. Do I want to do that? Let me see if I get it nice and clean. A paper towel. Okay. Oh, Sienna. You know, there is pinks in this painting as well. Um, maybe we'll play around with that, but let's see. Okay. So here's that raw Sienna wash. Lift out the sun. I really don't want any brush strokes to show through on this. We're going to pass it over that, yeah. Leave that white line right there, possibly. Build up little concentrations of variation. Oh man, this is so much fun. Y'all gotta try this. This painting and then just doing a whole wash over it whole glaze essentially and letting that whole feel change oh wow you just gotta be careful not to move the paper paint underneath So over this landmass. Just let the lines pass right there. Yeah. I don't know why I'm whispering. It seems so delicate and fun. Okay. Let me set this right here. Let me now bring out that sun and then I'll bring out I think I will use buff titan right there titan buff Oh, I almost want to try taking a little bit of ultramarine or Prussian blue and glazing. I might have to do just ultramarine just to prevent that green from, uh, from happening. With Sorry, yeah, ultramarine instead of Prussian blue.
here's a little bit of ultramarine just as an experiment. Butchering it now. Yeah, because I'm starting to pull the pigment up. Okay, well, we learned a lesson on this one. to dry off. Here's the questioning part, the reflections here. I have Titan Buff, so we can get this open. Everything seems difficult to open today. Really? If you ever have difficulty opening these, you always off camera run some warm water over it and use that. It seems like that's what I'm gonna have to do with this one. I think I do have a little bit here that I can reconstitute. It's not, oh, of course I'm gonna have black on there. Tighten buff, trying to get a lot of it. It's not the color that I'm wanting. There we go, got this open. I want it straight from the tube. That's why oh, I was so picky about that. Might mix a little bit of yellow on this. Here's the raw sienna. Let that pull off that green. It's 
it's not popping the way I want. So I'm going to have to move over to gouache. So I'm going to lift these guys up. So looking at this in retrospect, so I'm going to talk about this one while I'm just trying to build up these guys. In retrospect, I wanted to, I should have had a darker greenish U right here. And I think that would have helped this pop out a little bit more. Here's a little lemon yellow with that. That might be what we need. Well, anyway, so this is Stonehenge Aqua, um, the white paper, looking at the Sahara Dust picture by Matthew Clements. Um, I'm going to clean off brushes and all that, turn off the camera, and then in a few, I will start filming the, um, the second one on different colored paper, on tone paper. All right, so let me just dry it off, put a mat, sign it. So there you go. That's the first one of this series. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.